Well, good day again, or night, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, welcome to another midweek message. I hope that these messages have been enjoyable to you. Look also on our YouTube channel, which you're on now, for uh, Kendra Schmidt and her youth-oriented messages, which, in my experience, can be enjoyed by adults, too. I'm Pastor Mark Wilms of Bethlehem Lutheran in Royal, Iowa. Uh, and we begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We repeat the words of our creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your spirit. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come before you. Amen. As I was repeating the words of the Creed, I recall that the three parts of the Creed pertain to the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can see that behind me, the color of the altar hanging is, uh, or pyramid, is white. That's the color of celebration and purity. We celebrate the Trinity last Sunday. It'll change to green, you'll notice, next week because we will then have the Sundays after Pentecost. But uh, the Sunday after Pentecost Sunday is always white, and uh, it's the Sunday that we think about that strange mystery of the Christian Church, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Nowhere in the Bible will you find the word Trinity, um, but then again, nowhere in the Bible will you find the word organ either. Uh, it's one of those things that we have as a part of our faith that helps us to worship and helps us understand the biblical message. Clearly, Father and Son and Holy Spirit are all part of the biblical message, but the early church fathers came together and very helpfully brought all these together in the idea that there is one God, not three, one God, but God is expressed in three persons. Uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who all are co-equal, and that's what we call uh, the Trinity. Why is that important? Uh, well, because in the early church, there were those who wanted to deviate from the message and would end up just worshiping something else than we believe. There were those, for example, who said that Jesus wasn't God, he was only a man maybe especially endowed man with the gifts of, of God, but still a man nonetheless. Uh, and yet, if Jesus were a man, he would not have the authority to save us on the cross. Others went the other direction and said, God is so holy that if Jesus is God, he wasn't a man at all. He only looked like one. Uh, and those people had to be mistaken too, because if Jesus never really was a man, then that means he didn't die for us humans on the cross or walk as a human being. So we say that God is true man and true God together. Both of those things are necessary for the complete picture of Jesus. 
Uh, I searched around for a good scripture to highlight today, as we do every week, uh, about the Trinity. I think that a, a very good one, and there are several, but one of them is the first chapter of John. Uh, that famous hymn, we might say, to the coming of Christ, where John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He's talking about Jesus. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came through him. And he says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Nobody has seen God, John says. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father, who has made him known. Let's suppose that an artist sent you a picture of himself that he had painted. The picture would tell you something about the artist, but if he sent you a long descriptive letter about himself, that would tell you even more. And finally, if he decided to send his own son who looked like him to you to talk to you about his father, you would even know more yet. And that's what we have in the Bible. Uh, God has given us this world around us. He's also given us the written word to tell us even more and explain how he's with us. God sent his son to most intimately at all, most personally, uh, personally uh, show us the Father. The next day, John uh, saw Jesus coming toward him, that is John the Baptist, and he said, here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Chinese language creates the word righteousness by placing a character for lamb above a character for the pronoun I. In other words, our righteousness is secured when we lift the Lamb of God high above ourselves and ask him to cleanse us with his blood. And then John testifies to the third member of the Trinity, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and remained on Jesus. Uh, and I myself have, have seen and testified that this is the Son of God who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Philip Yancey, in his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, uh, said that he felt he learned something important about incarnation of Jesus and how this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit thing comes together uh, when he had an aquarium of all things. Uh, he said management of a marine aquarium is not easy. He said I had to run a portable chemical laboratory, to monitor the nitrate levels, uh, the ammonia content. Uh, I pumped in vitamins and antibiotics. I did all that stuff, sulfur drugs, and enough enzymes to make a rock grow. Uh, I filtered the water, he writes, uh, and through glass fibers and charcoal and exposed it to ultraviolet light. You'd think in view of all this energy that I expended on behalf of the fish, that the fish would be grateful to me. But he said, no, every time my shadow loomed above the tank, they dove for cover. They showed me one emotion only, fear. Uh, although I opened the lid and dropped food in on a regular schedule three times a day, they responded to each visit as if I was gonna torture them or something. I couldn't convince the fish of my true intent. Uh, which was benign. To the fish, I was a god, and I was too big for them. My actions too incomprehensible. My acts of mercy they saw as cruelty. My attempts at healing they viewed as destruction. Uh, so I realized then that to change their perception, the only thing that I could do, which I wasn't able, is to become a fish among them. Well, God was able to do that with us. Um, he became Jesus Christ so that he could show us his true intention toward us and then receive our faith as a gift. He's done that through the Holy Spirit, through the coming of Christ, and through himself as the Creator God. And we call this the Holy Trinity. Holy because it's sacred and set apart. Trinity because it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in this way, God amazingly is our God uh, worth believing, worth following, and worth uh, worshiping and celebrating at this season of Holy Trinity? 
Let me close a prayer, with a prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and through the power of your Spirit, three in one, that you graciously protect us and give us all we need. We ask you to forgive our sins where we have done wrong and to graciously protect us. Into your hands we commend this troubled world, our bodies and souls, all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us and we may know the glory of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good weekend, everybody.